My name is Paul Quam, and this YouTube video is to celebrate Mr. Bandorgan, Ken Smith, who lived just north of Columbus, Ohio. He built two world-class band organs, a Ruth Style 36, and a beautiful gavioli, which is sitting inside this trailer in his driveway. Band organ folks can take their prize instruments all over the country in trailers like this one. His shop and music room are next to his house. I met Ken at a band organ rally in Holland, Michigan a few years back. And when the rally ended on a Sunday night at dinner, he invited me to come to his home and professionally record his Ruth band organ. Well, a couple of years later, I made that visit, and while digitally recording the Ruth, I collected on video lots of interesting things that make up Ken's hobbies, which we'll see briefly. We'll begin by enjoying some close-ups of this remarkable replica of his Ruth, which he built to perfection. He built his gavioli that we'll see later. Ken was a big hit at the band organ rallies, too. Everyone knew him, and he was often called upon for advice from other builders or folks who wanted to repair band organs. Many experts in the field of fairground organs say that Ken Smith built a Ruth band organ as fine an instrument as those that came out of the Black Forest of Germany, where Adolf Ruth built his high-quality instruments. It is beautifully voiced, and his large collection of music books have some remarkable arrangements. We've been listening to It's a Small, Small World, recorded on a digital format. We're in Ken's basement, and he's going to let us hear the whistle on this magnificent train. That was pretty cool. That means look out, we're coming down the track. Ken, you got a beautiful locomotive here, and if you'll just hold that right there, and don't mm -hmm. worry about it. Okay. We took some pictures of this earlier, but I... I couldn't remember what size it is. Well, this uh, is built to the scale of one and a half inches to the foot. It's one eighth full size. And uh, where the I, number comes, six oh two. Well, this particular locomotive used to pass through my hometown on a branch line of the Wabash Railroad in uh, northwestern Ohio. Uh -huh. And uh, I remember this particular one because it was assigned to a local passenger train that went through the town twice a day. It would go east in the morning and west in the in the evening, and that's why I selected this number. The uh, engine was built from actual blueprints that were obtained from the railroad through a friend of mine who worked for the Wabash, sure. and uh, he let me make copies of them. And uh, it's something that I always wanted to do, and it was a considerable amount of work. It took me six years to do it. Bit. And. Uh, I see if we can get in the cab. Did most of my uh, my own pattern work for the parts, except for the drive wheels. I purchased them, and uh, had them machined because I didn't have machining facilities. And then the, everything else, though, I made myself, and machined it or filed it or sawed it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Real coal. Real coal. Yes, it burns coal. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's a it's a it's an authentic steam locomotive. You you boil water it. Uh, it builds up to 125 pounds of pressure. I was going to ask you what the pounds were. Yeah, 125 per square inch. And uh, it weighs roughly 650 pounds. I've never actually weighed it, but I've estimated what it weighs. Well, the dealer told me that he laid track in his large backyard, and he'd fire up the steam engine to take the kids in the neighborhood for a ride. <laughs> More than once, I believe. He's had it in the showroom for several years at the time of this interview. It's just marvelous. Like a bell. Well, let's hear that. That whistle one more time. Here, let me hold that out. That's one you built. Yeah, this is made from wood organ pipes to simulate the actual sound. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Spare time. He has a love for movie theaters and projectors. Not just your home variety of 8 and 16 millimeter, but a whole room full of big time 35 millimeter professional projectors. This is a Victor uh, silent 16 millimeter, uh -huh. and it was something that was donated. Uh -huh. uh, well, while you're over here, well, there's a yeah. there's a wall uh, single system sound camera uh -huh. uh, with a uh, with a magazine setting in front of it, mm -hmm. but it's, it's an incomplete camera. Yeah, they used them for newsreels, things sure. like that. Yeah. Yeah. Is, that but, what, is that what Paramount used? Uh, something like that. Type? They recorded the sound right on the film as they photographed the uh, the picture. Yeah. Now this is a Victor Safety Cinema 28 millimeter. I have no film for it, so I can't run it. Now why was it 28? Well, that's just the size they selected. It was unsuccessful. I mean, mm -hmm. it wasn't a commercial success. Mm -hmm. 
but it was the first one to come out with safety film for home use, schools, and so forth. Uh, this is a Holmes Silent 35 uh, millimeter projector that was used in schools, uh, churches, uh, businesses. Uh, sometime in the 20s, these were uh, these were in use before 16 millimeter became very popular. Mm -hmm. A very early type, you know, open mechanism. Uh, the old timers used to swear by these things, but they're uh, you know they're probably very hard on 19 19. Uh, I think it's 1911. This is a standard simplex. There were there were hundreds of these made, and they were in use from uh, well the the original ones went back, went way back before World War One, and they had variations of them, and they were made up into the 30s, and uh, it was a very popular machine, and you know they can still run a good picture today. Mm -hmm. uh, the sound head is an old an early uh, RCA, uh, I think it's a, a 1040. Mm -hmm. All right, next we have, this is a Moshe Graf Model H, uh, 1929 vintage. It was Moshe Graf's first sound projector and the first one that they made that had a rear shutter on it. Moshe Graf Lamp House. And we have an early RCA sound head that's incomplete. Boy, it sure this machine was, uh, was typical of machines in the 1930s. They come out with this model about 1928, they went brand new. And they lasted, they continued to make them up into the 50s. Yeah, this, this, this pair of Moshe graphs here uh, came out of a theater not more than 15 miles from here. Mm -hmm. And uh, they replaced a much older machine. I think they had Powers machines in there. And they were, they were state of the art for their period. And they were considered the Cadillac of the American projectors at that Moshe time. Graphs. Moshe graph, yes. Mm -hmm. And uh, Moshe Graf went out of business sometime in the mid-60s. And the story is that they refused to cheapen their product to compete with foreign imports. So rather than cheapen their product, they just simply went out of business. And that was the end of Moshe Graf. Over the years, Ken has purchased a number of theater movies because he has a real home theater, complete with two 35mm theater projectors in top shape. And it's just like a projection booth you'd find in a small theater, complete with background music before the show and light dimmers at showtime. And the curtains would open with a wide screen and all the comforts found in a home theater. This was several years before people began putting expensive video stuff in their special rooms. I didn't ask how many parties he and his wife and his daughter had put on. End of the theater. And we're inside his theater. There's the projection booth. Leisure seating, the usherette doesn't do anything. We're going to come way back here so I can get a shot. And we sit down with the guests, and this is what we see, folks. Stand by. Lights dim. So why'd you try out for the chorus? Because that's what you were looking for. We'll now take a look at the first band organ that Ken built, a replica of a gavioli. And we'll use the soundtrack from the video as we follow around and take a look at this beautiful, beautiful instrument.
Thank you for watching. There'll be more music on YouTube played on this Ruth. Look for it.